Thank you all for joining us. It's kind of weird speaking up into the, the audience here. So, But anyway, bear with me. Um, appreciate you all coming out here for what seems to be about the dozenth time that we've uh, done something like this. But all of them are extremely important to the university and to the community. And so we appreciate you taking the time out of your days to, to come out here and help us enjoy a, a ribbon cutting of this uh, tremendously important and impressive uh, facility. So thank you all. Uh, to get it started off, want to invite up the athletic director of our university, Josh Moon, who uh, pretty much gets to help out and control a lot of these facilities. So, Josh. Welcome, everybody. When you look around at the activity right now, we, we plan this. So we have soccer going on. We have football. We have 150 students and coaches on a safe, consistent turf surface. That's the big thing we're going to talk about here today is, is the safety and the consistent surface for, for activities. Uh, this turf that we're standing on here is extreme turf, which was used in four of the last six Super Bowls, and is a FIFA, which is the highest international governing, governing body of soccer, approved uh, producer. And this summer, this project was the largest turf project in the country, 220,000 square feet of turf. So pretty cool to, to be right here in Aberdeen, South Dakota. All of our students at Northern now have a place to stay active, and this has helped us expand our intramural programming. So this, students, this facility is not just for our student athletes, it's for all of our students here. We had intramural football out here this fall, just wrapping up this week. And this spring, we're looking at futsal, soccer, can jam, knocker ball. Anybody know what knocker ball is? You get into a big, giant ball, and you kind of push each other around. So we're going to uh, do some cool things that we've never been able to do here at Northern, again, for, to, to help our students, which will help retention and uh, create a better experience. And obviously, this will impact significantly impact our entire student athlete population. For women's soccer, who's practicing behind us here, you know, before where we're standing here, it was a grass field that was five feet too short. It was not in NCAA compliance, and they had a couple of metal bleachers right here uh, in the corner. And now what you see here is truly the best facility in Division II, if not one of the best in the entire country. And we think it's better than half of the Big Ten schools. Uh, again, so something really to be proud of, and we think this is going to be uh, a game changer for this program which will elevate us to the top of the conference and ultimately the top of, of the country in soccer. It has already helped our improve our recruiting reach, bringing in students from this past year, Texas, California, and Utah, and locking down some of the best talent in North and South Dakota this past year. And then football, which you see on the other side, before they practice where the science facility is right now that's going up, and their big thing for them was consistency of practice where this time of year uh, the field would, would get muddy and you talk about injuries and just not having a consistent surface to practice on uh, really has improved our, our injury prevention and again having that consistent surface um, just improved all of our practice and workouts this year so uh, we're going to take a picture here when we get done with all the speakers we're going to bring all the student athletes over and you can truly see the impact this is going to have on them. We've also had baseball, softball, track, basketball have, have all been out here training uh, one time or the other. So, uh, again, this is something that for all of our 375 student athletes is going to impact them. I would like to thank our leadership, Dr. Tim Downs, Jim Thayers, Todd Jordry, and all the donors who believed and dreamed with us on these few projects and the entire Educational Impact Campaign Committee and really the belief in how these three facilities will transform NSU Aberdeen and the entire region. So thank you again for your support, and go Wolves. Okay, now we're going to call up President Dr. Tim Downs. He uh, is he'll explain a little bit about the intricacy of all of these facilities. So, Dr. Downs. Thank you. Good afternoon. This is really a moment of pride. You know, e opening each one of these facilities is, is really critical for everyone that has been a stakeholder and investor and supporter of these events. To see the outcome is pretty, pretty critical. So these, these facilities, what's happened is when we found out that we could build some new residence halls because of gifts, we're very thankful. And then as Mr. Moon said, we then found out that we got another gift for a science center. That was great news. And then we decided, well, where are we going to put this science building? And we were going to put it uh, south of Meewalt Jensen. And then everybody said no. And then finally we looked up and said, really, we need a gateway to campus 
which is where it is going at the corner of 12th and State, which is awesome, except when we told athletics, they said, well, where do we, where do we play football uh, in practice? So we had to quickly hurry up and put together this project. Um, but the gifts of Great Plains East and West and the Science Center were really the catalyst for this. So we went into high gear instead of thinking for months or a year or two about a campus master plan we said, well, let's do a campus master plan and figure out where we're going to move all these these facilities and develop all these as assets for not just Northern State University, but for the region. So that's where we are. So then we take the master plan and we say, well, if we're going to do all this, I'm presuming that it's going to cost money. So that's how we ended up developing and starting the educational impact campaign, which includes three projects. The three projects are this project, the athletic and recreation fields, uh, directly west of here, just next to the, the football practice field, is the South Dakota School for the Blind and Visually Impaired. And that they've broken ground. We did the groundbreaking last week. So all these things are sequential. With the last asset to go into the neighborhood would be the regional sports complex, which will be for football and women's softball. So all these things are, are happening. We're doing a great job with fundraising, and we're thankful for everyone's support. But this facility, as Mr. Moon said, isn't just for the student athletes. It's for all students, and we'll be using it uh, strategically, getting community members, soccer on the field as well, because if they come here and play here, then it's a very high probability they want to go to school here. And each one of these assets is meant to attract students and prospective students to Northern State University, realizing how great we are as an institution. And it's not just for the facilities, it's really the people. It's the faculty, it's the staff, and it's everybody that is responsible for the care and feeding of all these prospective and future students. That's what we're here for, to help them grow and develop. So moving forward, we look at this as another asset for the student experience. Like Mr. Moon said, it's, it's, it's intramurals, it's recreation, it's obviously the teams that will play here. But the really neat thing is if you look out if you go up to the top of the pavilion and you look out across the football field, there's a gate right there next to the, uh, the post, that's the, the brick post, and that gate is put exactly where the sidewalk comes out of the School for the Blind. So they'll be able to walk out their back door. They'll have a key to get in. So the School for the Blind students will come out here and recreate because all students, no matter what shape, size, or ability, it's just a part of their wellness. So when we traded land with the School for the Blind, that was a part of the deal. So this facility is a regional facility, and the School for the Blind is a statewide facility. So we couldn't be happier. We couldn't be more proud. I'm thankful for all the people that have been involved with this. The city's been great in terms of vacating Lloyd Street, making sure that we could have enough space. All the stakeholders and investors uh, the the co-op architecture, the developers, the builders. It's really a group project to make sure all these things happened, and it's just getting started. So all these things are a catalyst for growth and development of Northern State University, and we all know that Northern State University is an asset to the, the city and the region, and as Northern grows and gets stronger, so does the rest, everyone else in the neighborhood. So we're we're pretty excited. If If I could roll my sleeve up, you'd see goosebumps because this is what we do. And we thank you all for being here today. Have a great day. Thank you, Dr. Downs. Uh, we're also, we are privileged to have a member of the Board of Regents here, Mr. Jim Thayers. Uh, all of these facilities are going to fall under the realm or the uh, purview of the Board of Regents. So, uh, Regent Thayers, thank you very much for being here. Thank you, Justin. You know, just a few years ago when I played sports in Ipswich, uh, our turf was dead grass and mud. And so this is pretty amazing. On behalf of the South Dakota Board of Regents, I congratulate you for the commitment that this business community and individuals have done to financially support these facilities. Uh, it's a testament to your investment not only in this university, but in higher education, in truly understanding the value that we are getting back the, as we continue to develop and give these kids an opportunity to uh, grow and become our future business leaders and the workforce. So 
thank all of you for your investment and your commitment to higher education. And as it's been mentioned, all these projects are also part of the Educational Impact Campaign, which the foundation obviously has a very critical part in. So we're going to welcome up the president and CEO of the NSU Foundation, Todd Jordry. Thank you, Justin. As you know, this is really the second piece of the puzzle of our project with the Educational Impact Campaign. We're really fundraising for facilities that will attract students to campus, events to Aberdeen, and participants to the region. We're so proud to thank today our, our many donors, our community leaders who have stepped up for us, and all of the forward-thinking citizens of Aberdeen and our region. This is quite a project we're very proud to be a part of, and as always, go Wolves. Thanks, Todd. Well, I'll invite up Co-op Architects, the uh, masterminds behind this beautiful facility. And we're fortunate to have uh, Cody Schockenmeyer here today with Co-op. So help me enjoy uh, welcoming him. Thank you, Justin. Uh, we're just happy for Northern, and uh, we we're thrilled to uh, be a part of this project. Um, we'd just like to thank, of course, uh, Northern State University and Dr. Downs uh, Board of Regents. Uh, we also want to thank um, the city of Aberdeen, the donors, uh, Veronica Paulson, uh, Monty Melhoff, and the entire facilities department, uh, Josh Moon, Zach Flockus, and the athletic department as well. So this is your uh, collaborative effort uh, that really brought this to fruition. So uh, we also want to thank our consultants who collaborated with us and worked on this, and that would be uh, Mettler Sick Miller Engineering, Helms & Associates, uh, DLR Group and uh, Rise Structural Associates. So it's a good day to be a wolf. Uh, go Wolves. Thank you, guys. Okay, and the individuals who are in charge of uh, constructing the facility, especially the pavilion that we're all here uh, next to today, uh, JDH Construction. So I want to invite up the job site superintendent, and superintendent Steve Hiddle. Thank you, Justin. What a beautiful building. What an awesome facility. What an exciting time for Northern State University. As site superintendent for JDH, I was lucky enough to be part of a team, a team consisting of contractors, architects, engineers, and the owner. A team tasked with bringing a vision on paper to life. Every other Tuesday, we would meet to plan, coordinate, schedule, discuss, and sometimes debate elements of this project. I would like to thank that team. It was great working with you. Also, I'd like to say hats off to Co-op Architectural Firm for designing a very beautiful building and facility. JDH would like to recognize the subcontractors and suppliers who were part of this great endeavor. Lead Transportation, Dobby Construction, Wright and Sudlow, b &H Masonry, Protec Roofing, House of Glass, Marco Floor Covering, Browns Flooring, FM Acoustical, Weber Works, Stein Sign, Basica Fencing, Active Heating, Muth Electric, Har Plumbing, Beetle Floral, <clears throat> Jerky Irrigation, TW Construction, and of course, Kansas Turf for the beautiful and colorful fields. We thank you. Together, we have put together something special here. To Northern State, thank you for the opportunity and congratulations on a world-class facility. What an exciting time for NSU. Thank you. And I, I sh before I forget, I should also mention uh, Obviously, there are several different uh, donors, but one of the groups that decided to donate to this project was the South Dakota American Legion. And they donated the flagpole, which is over there, which obviously has the American flag on it. But they're going to utilize this for the South Dakota Boys State, which is held here annually in May. And so they'll continue to use this for hopefully another 75 years plus here at Northern. So we can give them a hand. And on the same note, 
invite up uh, the mayor, who's uh, great at closing out these sort of things. But Mayor Mike Leveson, thank you for being here. Thanks so much, Justin. Uh, it's uh, another wonderful day. I would like to start by recognizing a uh, celebrity we have with us. Governor Farrar is, uh, is here with us, uh, and uh, great to have you here, and uh, thanks for all your services. Wonderful to have you here as a part of this. Well, uh, 50 years ago, uh, I was on this field playing intramural football. Uh, for some reason, uh, Clark Swisher didn't want me on the varsity, so I ended up uh, in the uh, intramurals at uh, 5'8 and 150, uh, Kramer Hall uh, team. So 50 years later, here we are. And once again, we are upgrading a facility. You know, it wasn't that many years ago in Aberdeen when a business uh, or the hospitals or any of the schools or people were trying to attract upper management people or any employees to come to Aberdeen, it wasn't that long ago where you had to think long and hard about what you would show them. We didn't have anything to show them. And now we've just been clicking off these projects from the city and from businesses and from the school districts and uh, from Northern and Presentation both. One project after another where now you can't show everybody everything in, in a whole day. And we're closing in on finishing it off with uh, the football stadium and all the things we will do there. But this is just one more of those great things that we've added to Aberdeen that not only make this a great place to improve the quality of life for those that are here, but uh, to attract other people to come. And certainly some, some of these young women here and the young men on the other side of the field, they've made a commitment to our city and to our university. We owe it to them to have this. We owe it to them to not take any less here than they would expect to have anywhere else. And not only have we done that, but from the vision of the, of the people represented by the speakers who preceded me here, we've not only given people what they have elsewhere, in almost every case, we're giving them more. And it's a great thing for our city, and I especially want to uh, acknowledge whoever the folks were who did the final designs and the, and the fine work of, of picking out what it looks like and the colors and the configurations and all the dynamics of this, that takes a really special skill that not very many of us have. And the final result is not only functional, but it's beautiful visually as well. It's another great thing for Aberdeen, obviously, another great thing for the university. We're not done yet, but this is another big step, and congratulations to all of you that made it happen. Okay, we're going to do some photos now, so I'll, I'll call off some names. Uh, before I do that quickly, I, I would like to thank a few individuals. I want to thank Lisa Grote, Cami Speaker, Josh Koonsman, all the individuals that made today happen. Uh, it doesn't go on with, uh, without a lot of hard work and planning. Uh, to the point where we could probably offer a uh, degree program in this sort of thing here. So thank you all for your help, um, as well as IT being here and capturing this via video. So thank you all. Um, you're all invited to take part in the treats afterwards. It will be up inside the, the conference space there. But before we do that, we'll get some photos. So could I have uh, Josh Moon, athletic staff and coaches, Regent Thayers, Mayor Livson, Dr. Downs, co-op, Architect uh, representatives, excuse me, JDH representatives, Veronica Paulson, Todd Jordry, John Olson, join us down here on the field, please. Okay, on three, we'll cut it. One, two, three. Chamber Ambassadors, you can work your way out there. Athletic staff, you guys can get in there.